I'm going to start it off. First, you introduce yourself, your Christian name, then your native name. And then you say that, you know, this is Stories from the Res. And then you go into your story okay. one time. Okay, I got this. You ready? Yes. All right. So, my name is Sherry, but my true name is Waluta Aglilewin, which means brings back sacred woman. And I am an enrolled member of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe in Eagle Butte, South Dakota. And I've kind of had a crazy life and a lot of people ask me to share my crazy stories. And my first story is when I was about four years old, I had just moved to Red Scaffold. Um, that's like a little, like you blink and it's gone. And where we lived, there was a house up on the hill that was um, my Uncle Butch's friend's house and our friend Wade. And then down below was our house, which is Madonna's and whoever else was there. And then about a mile and a half down from her house was my aunt and uncle, Mabel Ann and Butch. Now, there's nothing out there in South Dakota. You don't even have to go, let me tell you. You don't want to go out there. It's too cold, you're not gonna survive. So one time, I stayed at my aunt and uncle's place and I had forgotten my pillow. Now, every res has its dogs, you know, they're just everywhere. We had a few of them. We had a little pack of them, like three or four. And they would greet us when we'd get home. And one that night I got home and I was getting ready for bed and I had forgotten my pillow down at my aunt and uncle's place. And my mom, Madonna, said, Oh, go get that pillow. You got to have your pillow. You can't be leaving your stuff around. And I was like, oh, man. Now it was dark. It was like pitch black. There was a full moon. And I was like, oh, man. She said, I'm not driving you. You're going to have to walk down there by yourself. And I was like, by myself? And she's like, look, you'll be fine. There's dogs. We got res dogs. Now, our house was just a little two-room shack, and there was a big barn. I think the barn was bigger than the house itself, so that's always awesome. And then there was a big street light, like out of nowhere. It's just a light, a huge light in the middle of nowhere. So I'm used to these dogs. They were my friends, and I was like, yeah, let's, let's go. I'm, I'll be fine. And I was scared. Like, I was scared. I was four, you know. And I remember I got my brave face on, and I already got yelled at, and I already was in trouble. So I was like, all right, let's go. So I go down, and I start walking, and the dogs are with me. They're with me from the front door, and, you know, I'm thinking, I got this, you know. I don't Screw that, I'm gonna go get my pillow. And I start walking and we get to the street light and I don't hear the dog's footprint, footsteps beside me, like they're not there. So as I'm walking underneath the street light into the darkness and realizing that there's no dogs beside me, I stop and I turned around and all sitting under the street light, watching me walk into the god dang dark. And I was like, see, this is why I don't like dogs. They just left me to fend for myself. Long story short, I did make it all the way down to my aunt and uncle's place and my aunt opened the door and she's like, what are you doing? It's like, I forgot my pillow. And she's like, oh, okay. And she gave my pillow, and then she gave me a ride back. And I was like so thankful because I was like great. Because she asked me like, how'd you get here? And I'm like, I walked. You had to walk? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, well you made it. And that lesson, I don't know. Nope, because I don't, 
I don't want to leave nothing. I don't want to leave nothing behind. So yeah, I still don't like res dogs because they're just about food. They ain't about helping you. They just want to watch you get eaten by the wolves. So that's my first red story. Beautiful. Thanks. Oh gosh. So I honestly waited till I was 21. Well, actually, um, that's a lie. I tried to get into the bar like a week before my 21st birthday and they carded me and I was like, ID. I didn't, I wasn't 21 yet. They knew it. So I finally got my ID and I got all excited because I was like, all right, I'm gonna go out and party like everybody else. And I had a Kahlua and cream because I like sweet drinks. And then I think I had one at the bar. Yeah, I had one at the bar, and then they always do closing, you know, let's call. So we hightailed it out of there, and we went to the, the local little store, and I went and I grabbed me a bottle of Boone's. Uh, I think they only had them in four packs. No, it was a six pack of Little Zimas, and some 7-Up, a box of crackers, and some Tylenol. And... Uh, because I knew I was drunk. I could feel it. My body was warm, and I was like, ooh, this is great, you know? So we all get in the car. There was a bunch of us. We were in, actually in a minivan, an Astro minivan. So, like, only one side of the door opens to, so you can get out, and then they got the bench seats. So I was sitting on the side closest to the window, and, you know, we were all drinking, and I noticed I really had to pee by this time, you know? couple hours later and I'm like dude you guys I really gotta pee they're like okay yeah yeah we'll let you out we'll let you out so I got my stuff you know I'm like I don't need my alcohol I'm just gonna grab my crackers and my and I'm thinking this is great I've really got drunk on my 21st birthday and hell yeah this is the life you gotta remind, remind you this is the first time I ever drank like drink drink never drank before this time. I've seen people drunk, but I didn't know the extent of how it feels. So, as I said, I'm gonna go out. I gotta use the bathroom. You know, I had this big plan, elaborate plan of what the hell I was gonna do. And so my friend jumps out, opens the door, and I'm like scooting over. And I'm like, okay guys, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And I step out of the van and bam, I just hit the ground. Like my legs, I don't know if they got the memo or what the hell happened, but I didn't make it out very far. I just made it on the ground. And I was laying there and I was like, look up. And like, there's a bunch of Indians just looking at me. Like, do we laugh? Do we, what do we do? Next thing I know, so when I fell, my pop flew out and my box of crackers was like right next to me. This freaking res dog just comes out of nowhere, starts sniffing me, and then tries to take off with my freaking box of crackers. I'm telling you, I was pissed. I couldn't get up to run. So I'm like hugging rocks at the damn dog. And everyone's like, uh, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what? Like, you could help me at least get my crackers or something. But my whole thing was, I was so worried about my crackers because that was gonna save my life once I figured out that I was gonna be sober. And it was, it kind of taught me a lesson. I didn't want to drink no more, especially if dogs were. They just looked at me and laughed, you know. They did eventually get out of the van and help me up and into the house and my crackers were gone. But I still had my Tylenol and 7-Up and well, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs>